I've been enjoying My Hero Academia since last year when a couple good friends introduced me to it. The story is a breath of fresh air. I've seen it called a superhero show for people who are sick of superheroes, and that feels true enough. But I think what makes this show so special can be summed up by something the guy who turned me on to it said. Faith in humanity is a big theme for this show, and that gets lost sometimes in superhero plots. Like the best sports anime aren't really about the sport being played, Hero Aka isn't really about superheroes. It uses superheroes to tell the story it really wants to tell. A story about believing in the best of people, and what we can accomplish when we come together to build each other up. I could go on and on about this show, but for this video I want to focus on the most recent episode, which instantly vaulted its way into my top favorites. But first let's back up a bit. I shouldn't be surprised that I love this episode so much, considering the preview for it got me hyped, more so than possibly any other preview so far. And the reason is simple, I love the characters of Hiroaka. I'm a sucker for character-driven writing. If the story is weak or a bit cliché, you can still turn out something great with a strong cast of characters. Hiroaka has a strong story and a strong set of characters to back it up. And that's impressive if for no other reason than the sheer volume of characters it presents us. I mean, I was always impressed that my childhood favorite show Digimon Adventure was able to balance eight main characters and have them all be well-rounded and interesting. But Hiroaka gives us the students of UA, both classes 1A and 1B, the teachers, the other pro heroes, the villains, various side characters, and with a cast this monstrous, it's truly amazing that I came away from it all hating only one of them. The fact that everyone in this ginormous cast is interesting and likable is an impressive achievement of the writing, and it's due in no small part to the way each arc serves to spotlight a new character. Todoroki in the sports festival, Ida during the internships, Yaogirozu in the final exams. The relationships between these kids aren't as cut and dry as they are in a lot of stories set in high school. The same characters aren't with each other all the time. They interact in a big group, and then smaller groups, then different groups and pairs, all the while serving to develop different relationships and their own characters while keeping things fresh because we're not just seeing the same faces all the time. That's why I was so jazzed that we finally got into the dorms. I love these characters so much and I just want to see more of them. Well, that and one other reason. <laughs> No, not... not that kind... Ugh. The kind of fan service that fan fiction is made of. The idea that, hey, you love these characters, right? You want to see them interact in new and interesting situations? Let's take them on a tropical vacation to a high-tech super-secret island where they all have to dress in formal wear for no discernible reason. You love these characters, right? You want to see them in casual clothes? You want to see what their living spaces look like, right? Um, yes. The dorms not only mean more chances for all these characters to interact, they also get to flaunt their personalities like never before. I was psyched at the prospect of seeing every character's room, but I didn't think we would get to them all in the first dorm episode. Yes, this episode delivered in a big way, from the expected things like Midoriya's room being filled with All Might memorabilia, to the unexpected reveal that Sato bakes, which makes perfect sense because his quirk is filled by sugar, so of course he knows how to bake. There was the unsurprising fact that Ida's wall is lined with textbooks, with the twist that he has another wall dedicated entirely to glasses, which is hilarious because it's so ridiculous, but it also makes total sense because of course Ida would go through glasses like wildfire with the intense training and dangerous work of being heroes. And it's just so silly, but it's so practical, and it's so very Ida. Also, there's this bit of comedy gold. <laughs> Todoroki is best boy, second only to human incarnation of the sun itself, Midoriya. Yes, this episode delivered all around, with just a few disappointments here and there. Ojiro's room didn't reveal much about his personality, Uraraka's room didn't feel as tailored to her as the others, and Shoji's room was flat out bare. Ojiro and Shoji are two of the least developed characters in the class. This was a golden opportunity for us to learn more about them. And while Uraraka has gotten more screen time than either of them, the fact that her room doesn't scream Uravity was a bit of a letdown after the more distinctive spaces of her classmates. 
But I still can't be too disappointed, as it feels less like oversight and more like the writers not showing all their cards at once. The dorms mean more chances for these characters to grow, for the writers to expand and elaborate on their personalities, and the fact that we didn't even get to see Bakugo and Suyu's rooms at all just whet my appetite for what's to come. The best stories have a reason for everything they do, but not everything needs a reason to happen. When you have a story this strong and a cast this diverse and engaging, sometimes it's fine to just say, hey, wouldn't it be fun if? Wouldn't it be fun if these characters all got to take a vacation they shouldn't logically be able to afford? A vacation that puts them all in beachwear or formal wear or even both? Wouldn't it be fun if they took a trip to the big city and we got to see their reactions? Wouldn't it be fun to take a closer look at these characters' personalities and living habits? With a premise that only promises more character growth and interactions going forward. Sometimes giving the fans exactly what they want to see is a good thing. When fans love your characters, they want to know everything about them. What's their favorite food? How did they dress in the winter? If they all started a rock band, what instruments would they play? Fan service, when done right, allows you to shake up the status quo by moving your characters to an entirely new situation and seeing how they react and adapt. And ideally, more than just being a lot of fun, you should come away from it with stronger, more well-developed characters. Sometimes it's fine to just do a thing for the sake of doing it. But Hiroaka isn't content to stop there, oh, oh, oh no, because then we get the last five minutes and the gut punch of a reveal that there actually was a reason for all the shenanigans, and it is heartbreaking. Suyu is a great character, but she's mostly been sidelined since the USJ arc, getting brief shining moments in the internships and the villain attack on the summer camp. But she was the one most vocally opposed to an attempt to rescue Bakugo on the part of the kids. She said some harsh things, but she had a point. And rather than just letting her comments go, Hiroaka once again lays all its emotions bare when Suyu directly confronts the five that went after Bakugo, expressing her disappointment that her words couldn't sway them, her grief that she said something so blunt to them in the first place, and how this unease has weighed on her so heavily that she couldn't participate in the room presentation contest, smiling and acting like nothing is wrong. But rather than bottling everything up like lesser writers would have her do, she comes out and just says everything that's on her mind. Not only is it completely in character for her to be so forthcoming, she can't move on until she does, and she desperately wants everything to be alright between her and her friends again. Her words hit her classmates hard, bringing not just perpetual crier Midoriya, but even Yagirozu and Kirishima to tears. It's a powerful emotional gut check to cap off all the silliness that came before, the kind of tonal whiplash that Scrubs was infamous for. And then it's revealed that the whole room presentation contest was only even conceived in the first place to help ease the tension that's been hanging over everyone and bring them all back together! The writers didn't need a reason for any of this nonsense, but damn it if they didn't give us an excellent one anyway. One that not only brought a great character back into the spotlight, but ultimately tied back into the show's greater theme. We are strongest when we come together to build each other up. This is how you do fan service right, and it's the best start this highly anticipated arc could have possibly had. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you thought of this episode and what you're looking forward to seeing from the dorms in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more Hiroaka content, let me know. I'm Eternally Optimistic, and I'll catch you guys next time. Ojiro's room didn't reveal much about his personality. Urar she said some harsh things, but she had a point. And rather than just... <clears throat>